Hey everyone, James Story with JDM Partners and today I have an exciting video for you. It's the second part of a three part series on how to value a commercial property and today we are talking about how to calculate the cap rate uh, without a comp and when we usually use cap rates to value commercial properties we look at other properties in the market and you know kind of come up to more of an average of how to compete against those properties to sell them or to value that property but today what do you do when when you don't have comps like how do you value a property and there's a back-end equation that you can use based upon what the property is when it's stabilized what would it be worth once it's stabilized meaning when you get the income to be stable whether you're buying an empty property whether you're buying a property that's already stabilized there's actually a calculation on figuring out what but that property should be worth based upon today's value and so to start that equation just put in cap rate the equation is the loan constants times loan to value Put those both in parentheses plus your expected return on your money times your down payment percentage so like i said kind of a comp uh, complicated equation so let's break it down piece by piece and as i see going left to right i actually need to start here with the loan to value to kind of tell you what where to start so let's start with loan to value loan to value on your debt we're talking about the debt side this is the equity side of the equation this is the debt side loan to value on your debt side is basically the percentage of the value of the property you're buying that you can get as a loan so if you buy a million dollar property what percentages of that would be your debt? It would be your loan. Um, is it 70%, 75%, 80%? You see those kinds of ranges in the current market. So at 75%, you'd get a loan of $750,000. So let's use 75%. That would be a great start for most investment properties. Next, for your debt side, you need to figure out your loan constant. Your loan constant is basically what is your annual payments. You take all your monthly payments for 12 months, add them up, your annual payment divided by the amount of loan that you're getting. This is effectively your cost of capital for your debt. And there's an interesting way of calculating this. You need a calculator to calculate it, particularly a time value of money calculator, or TVM calculator. So I'm gonna pull up mine by what I'm, I'm mentioning on how to calculate this. So let's say you're getting a loan at 75% loan to value. It's on 25 year amortization, that's 300 months. I'll say period 300 months. And let's say your interest rate on that, actually let's use 7%. I like that, that percentage a little bit better. Um, on present value of one, so that gave me a kind of an interesting number. It gave me 0 0.00707. That is your monthly cost of capital. We need your annual cost of capital, which I would just take that number and times it by 12. And that gives me a cost of capital of 8.48. Eight point four eight percent. That is your cost of capital. So um, I'm writing them down as percentages. Just know that when we add these up in the calculator, you need to do them in decimal points. But that gives us basically the debt side of the equation. The next side of the equation, which is a little bit more non-market driven. It is market driven, but not as market driven as the debt side is basically the expected rate of return that you would get once the building is stabilized on an annual basis. What's your expected rate of return? We also call that cash on cash return times your down payment percentage. So let's start with the easy part of the equation, the down payment percentage. In this situation, if our loan to value is 75%, 
what's left of the 100%, that's 25%. That's your down payment. Okay, so that's the, e that's the easy part times. Now, let's talk about the, the harder part, the return. This it depends and changes from investor to investor and asset to asset. In investment real estate, we have a pyramid of various different types of properties where w what we try to describe is what type of investment property this is. And at the bottom of the pyramid, we've got core. On the next layer, we've got core plus. On the next layer, we've got value add. And the next layer, on the top of the pyramid, we've got opportunistic. So as you go up this uh, different, this pyramid, the higher and higher and the higher returns an investor needs to be given based upon the risk that they're given, they're, they're taking. So, you know, let's kind of describe some of these. Core would be at the bottom, think about buildings that are standalone that are, that have national credit tenants in it with big balance sheets. So think Starbucks, think, uh, think McDonald's. But those types of tenants where you know that you're going to get your money every single month, they're not going to stop paying. So you're going to take a smaller return. And typically what you would see for core investments, you're going to see somewhere between seven and 10% annual returns on those, on, on your money, on, on those types of investments. When you get up to a little bit higher, you got core plus. Those are kind of like a sale lease back or a, a not a national tenant, but a long-term lease. Someone you were, you're going to take a little bit more risk on the investment. On those, you're going to see somewhere between 9 and 13%. And then as you keep on getting up value add, meaning a, a property that's not up to its full income potential, has some vacancy, you know, maybe have, you have to turn some rent over in multifamily, um, you're going to see stabilized returns of 13 to 15% on those. And then on the top, the opportunistic, those are ground up developments or you're buying land. You're taking on full risk. Maybe you don't even have a tenant yet. You're just going to build something on spec. Those all could be 20% plus. We've even seen them as high as 50%. Um, for this particular situation, you know, we did a loan of 75% loan to value. We did a 7.5% interest rate. We're going to use a core plus, you know, so maybe this investor is going to expect a return between 9 and 13 percent. Let's say they're buying a standalone industrial property and the current tenant, the, the occupant in that building is going to do a sale lease back, meaning they're going to sell that building and lease it back from us. And they're not a national credit, so that puts them more in a core plus. So let's use between 9 and 13 percent. Let's use... 10%. That sounds like a good number. So, now that we have now that we have all of our numbers, we have the equation. We just got to use our calculator here. We got 0 0.0848 times 0.75. We've got I'm going to start writing it down in decimals by the way, so I don't want to try to confuse you too much. 0 0.0637 six. That's the debt side cost of capital. Now the equity side cost of capital is 0.1 times 0.25. It's 0 0.025. Now we just add them together. Plus 0 0.0636 is 0 0.08. Eight, six. So now let's just move this into a percentage. So we're going to move the decimal point over two points. That's going to be 8.866. 8 and that is your cap rate once the property is fully stabilized. So we now know the equation from the first video on how to value a property. You know, you got, you need your cap rate, you need your net, net operating income, and uh, then you would get your property value. We now have the cap rate of that equation. We now need the net operating income of that equation. And stick around for our next video on part three on how to calculate your net operating income.